There are sections of Chicago the guidebooks don't refer to. You can't blame them, really. The guidebooks function is to sell the glamour and excitement of our windy city. And whichever way you dress it up, old age is neither glamorous nor exciting. Roosevelt Heights used to be a plush neighborhood. But the plush neighbors moved uptown, leaving the old people. And old people don't move easily. They become set in their surroundings. Their friends live next door. They've been going to the same store for 25 years. And probably most important of all, they can't afford to relocate, even if they wanted to. The battle of fixed income versus galloping inflation never ends. But even inflation took a backseat here in Roosevelt Heights, as a far greater fear overtook the residents, a terror which effectively dwarfed everything else. October 14th, one Harry Starman was about to break the law. He'd done it before many times. Gambling on Friday night was forbidden by Hebrew law. So, to escape his wife and to escape going to Temple, Harry and his cohorts took drastic measures. There were other residents of Roosevelt Heights. The locals had tried to get rid of them a couple of times, but what with the fact that the garbage collection wasn't as efficient as it could have been, they just hadn't been too successful. Do you mind if I cut? Oh, oh God. Wait a minute. Chief? Oh. You're late? What's with the late? When I stopped to get this. They raised the prices again. You each owe me 50 cents. Uh-uh. You still haven't paid for the bottle I bought last week. I paid you. You did not. Joe, I leave it to you. You were there. We I can... paid you. I'm telling. We're gonna play poker or we're gonna schmooze. Which penny you... and tea, penny raises. Good. But I paid him. No matter what he said, what are you sitting? Where's the glasses? Glasses, yes. Did you ever get them? No. I always have to get them. And you did not pay me for last week. And don't stack the deck while I'm out. Silly old much. If it wasn't this table, I wouldn't be found dead here. I hate to go out there. Bacon and ham rocks, pig's knuckles. So who told you to take this job anyway? Then tell a lie so you wouldn't lose anything on Social Security. Yeah, you, you know him. You know him. Ante up. Ah, ah, ah. Ante up. Hey, did I ever tell you about the time I played with Nick the Greek? You did, Harry, you did. It was in Las Vegas. It was a pleasure to lose them. He could bluff you without flinching an eyelash. He was an artist. Buck Feynman, 72 years old, a cantankerous old geezer, no one liked him much. But they allowed him to play poker with him once a week because he was a terrible card player and had been known to lose as much as 75 cents in a single evening. Also, his part-time job allowed their group a safe hiding place for their clandestine games of chance. For Buck's case, this particular night, it was too clandestine. Who's there? Looks like, uh, hey. Rabbi Schumann, what are you doing out here? Now, no matter what terrible stories my wife told you, it's still only a penny empty game. Wrong, I know, but it's only penny empty. quiet that week and there was something in the report that I'd picked up over my police radio that didn't sound strictly kosher. See that's how it I'll was. Move the the I I Why should we have to live with such tourists? I'm sorry but I don't understand yet. Tourists! Hey, grief, unhappiness, don't you understand? Tourists. Uh, what happened? Old guy croaked. 
have a nice choice of words. You expect to escape old age? Okay, an old guy passed on. Passed on? What did he pass on of? Who knows? Old age, boredom. Old age, boredom. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, who are you? Press. I wouldn't if I were you. Son, I've seen more dead bodies than you've had TV dinners. Oh, yeah. Old age and boredom. Yeah, how'd it happen? Well, apart from the old people, the other uh, tenants in this area are rats. And rats do get hungry. Rats. Right. Anything else you want to know? No. Of okay, course, you take care, okay? If only we didn't send them out for the glasses. I really liked him. He was a nice guy. But did any of you gentlemen here know the deceased? Sure, I know him. What was his name? Feynman. Buck Feynman. His real name was Julius. Buck. He got from the movies. He loved movies. Hey, you were a reporter? Mm-hmm. Then how about reporting, for instance, how come the health department don't get their cans down here and clear out the rats? It's not only here. You see my apartment building around the back. Health department? Houston, you work for the health department? Me? Yeah. No, no, that was my brother. No, he was in charge of printing up quarantine signs. That was a long time ago. What about the rats? Well, we all have rats, sir. I mean, you should see the one I work for. Talking about rats that eat you before you can get a decent Jewish burial. Uh-huh. Well, you, you may have a point there, Mr. Uh, uh, sir, your name? Yeah. Starman. Starman. Harry Starman. You writing this? Yes. Starman. S T A R one R. R. Yeah. One R. One R, yeah. Starman. You know, I understand we've all got problems and we gotta handle them. Okay, I understand that. But on top of all of that, rats? Rats that chew you up before you even get cold? Well, how long was he dead? Well, you see, we were playing poker. I brought some wine, he went to get some glasses, and about a half hour later we went to look for him. And that's when we found him, right, folks? Right, right. One half hour. Half hour. What did the police say? Nothing. No, nothing official. Unofficial? Well, it had to be longer than half an hour for firemen to be devoured, that the old guys made a mistake and they're getting senile. Well, it is an old people's neighborhood. Well, old doesn't have to be synonymous with senility, Tony. How old are you? Just imagine. There's all these old people hanging on to whatever they've got left out of living in this, this ghetto with flesh-eating rats breeding all around them like, like, rats. All right, all right. Here, put it on the wire. Well, take out that bleeding heart stuff. Bleeding hearts? Me? Where? Oh, yeah. the tragic death of Julius Feynman, age 72. Tragic offends you. Just make it the death of Julius Feynman, age 72. We don't want to imply that we're tossing brickbats at the sanitation department for malfeasance or anything like that. You're a real crusader, Tony. Well, listen, you've got a good angle there. Just get more of it. You get some damning facts and I'll go with you all the way. We'll slam anyone who's responsible. Really? You're going through a few brickbats, are you? Or is that uh, too rough? Maybe we can just pelt them with some wet biscuits. <sighs> Here, maybe you better sign this. What is it? Just sign it, Tony. I gave Harry a few bucks. What for? Come on, Tony, it's just sign it, will you? won't do any harm. I'm in a part of my pension, he's got nothing. Mm. Thanks very much, Tony. You're Richard the Lion-Hearted, Patrick, Henry, and St. Teresa, all stuffed into one big pinstripe suit. Matty, send up a corned beef sandwich, Lee, and a bottle of cream soda. And fresh pickles this time. You're working late tonight, Miss Emily. Oh, I'm helping out with the advice column. All these poor people, such problems. Look at this. <laughs> All those women hanging around him. I should have such a problem. What are you going to tell him? Well, I hoped you'd come up with a suggestion. Me? <laughs> okay. You tell him to get his doctor to prescribe a massive course of hormone treatments. And him, 73 years old. Uh, is this your story? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, may I read it? Yeah, sure. I'm not going to help you with that stuff, though. Oh, well, I'll 
let you in on a little secret. I just took this job as a stepping stone to what I really want to do. Which is what? I'm writing a novel. A detective novel. Well, good for you. I needed experience of life. I was becoming insulated in that little place of mine. And anyway, down here I get to use the typewriters and the paper's free. Well, that's a very good attitude for a professional writer. Madam Emily. Good night. Uh, when you're finished with that, give that to uh, Martha to put that on the wire. Hey, Vincenzo is going to give me a feature series on Roosevelt Heights. I need more background, lots more. But right now, I'd had enough. I was tired and I wanted to go home. Maybe if I'd done my job properly and gone back to Roosevelt Heights that evening, the Goldstein would still be alive. I didn't understand it. Why? The movie. Well, what's to understand movies nowadays? They take their clothes off. That's all that matters. Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy, they never took their clothes off. <laughs> Neither did we, really. We never left the lights on, either. <laughs> Now that I come to think of it, what would it have heard? Come on, Miriam. Well, what would it have heard? All that running in and out of the bathroom, putting on our pajamas, all that ceremony. Oh, Saul. What were we so ashamed of? Come on, Miriam. <laughs> Saul, where are you going? Taking the shortcut. I don't want to. What's what I don't want to? We always take the shortcut through the alley. Now, that was before Mr. Feynman died. So what is that supposed to mean? Buck Feynman is going to pounce on you fresh from the grave? You know what I'm talking about. Mr. Feynman, God rest his soul, he didn't just die. He was killed by the same wicked person that, that's doing that all over the neighborhood. Those are just kids, Miriam. Just kids. Kids don't go around killing people. All right, Mr. Wise Guy. So what did kill Mr. Feynman? He died. He was pushing 80. He was entitled. I am not going to take the shortcut. OK, so the cocoa will be ready on the stove when you come home. Sal? <laughs> You're a stubborn man, Sal Goldstein. My feet hurt. someone was too hysterical to make much sense, but the little that I could glean made it hard for me to sleep. Who croaked this time? Beat it, I'm busy. Just a name? Come on. Goldstein, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Chewed up like the rest of them? I'm not a quiz show host. For one thing, they make better money than I do. Better jokes, too.
Oh, Hi, Mrs. Starman. Mr. White. Why aren't you home in bed? Who can sleep in an atmosphere like this? Listen, Mr. Kolchak, I know who did it. Yeah, sure. Please, Mr. Kolchak, listen to me. I'm telling you, I know who did it. Mrs. Starman, would you do me a favor? You're right in my picture. But you don't understand. I'm the one who called you. You what? I called you. Why didn't you identify yourself? Didn't I? Come on, Mr. Starlin. Let's uh, have a talk. He lives there. It's his restaurant. Who? The man who murdered the Goldsteins. The Hindu. Well, why would he want to kill the Goldsteins? He's a Nazi, that's why. Harry, excuse me, but you usually don't find Hindu Nazis in any great number. Look, the Goldsteins were Jewish, right? Yeah, well, this is a Jewish neighborhood, Harry. Sure it is. That's why he chalks up those swastikas all over the place. Well, how do you know it's him, Harry? Look, he moved in here a couple of months ago, just after the rats chewed up old Mrs. Resnick, and that's when the swastika started to appear. I mean, Mr. Kolchak. What sort of a nut opens an Indian restaurant in a Jewish neighborhood? Me, personally, I'm not too crazy about kosher chutney. Do you mind? <laughs> yeah, well, you got a point there. Sure, he's up to something bad. I saw him the other night. He was painting swastikas all over the door and fence back where he lives and back at the restaurant. I'm telling you, he's as crazy as a bed bug. He is. Who are we talking about? All right, Harry, let's go see. So, so. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah? Huh? Well? Here? Yeah? Okay. Uh. Huh? Was I right or was I right? You was right. You want to join me? Are you kidding? I can barely climb the stairs, let alone a fence. I'll wait here. Keep your eyes peeled, huh? How did you get around there? I'm not around there, I'm around here. Mr. Kolchak! <laughs> to see you guys. I bet you are. Okay, Kolchak. Let's have it one more time. Okay, this will be the fifth one more time. Oh? You got nothing better to do, have you? You kidding. Now, you and Harry climbed over this fence, right? I went over. Harry stayed outside. Why? Why what? Why did Harry stay outside? He was an old man. His fence climbing days are over. Maybe he's afraid of you. Maybe you ought to have your marbles examined. Oh, oh boy. I love a wise guy. Okay, keep going, Kolchak. Well, let's see. I dropped down over the fence. He was back there. I moved out a little and took a couple pictures. And then I heard him scream. Ah! 
What's going on here? Police business, that's what. Are you up to it again, Proudman? Weren't you reprimanded for getting a little rough a few years ago? Who, oh, me? You all right, Carl? He was just giving testimony. Tell him, Kolchak. No, that's right, Tony. No, just like the officer says. I'm surprised at you guys. Surprised and very disappointed. Am I out, Tony? Yes, you're out. Now, let's see here. You are Frodman? Now, you're a new face around here. What's your name? Come on. What's your name? Thomas. Thomas. Thank you very much. Reading between the lines of all the police hassling, their message came through. Poor Harry had died of natural causes and then been stripped of his flesh by rats. That theory had been passable in the case of Buck Feynman, specious in the case of the Goldsteins, and now in the case of Harry Starman, just too hard to swallow. After all, I had been there. I knew that Harry had been devoured in the short time it takes me to click off a couple of snapshots. Mr. Drevitz! Frank, you remember me call Koshak INS? INS, you fumigated our offices last January for roaches. Oh, yes, I remember you. You still leaving those half-eaten donuts and bagel crumbs all over your desk? Ain't much any exterminator can do for you. You keep up that kind of no, behavior. I, I don't eat bagels. Vincenzo oh, eats bagels. Oh, yes, you did. Listen, is it something I can do to help you? Quickly, I, I don't even have time to break for lunch. Yeah, okay, now, your typical urban rat. How long does it take a pack of them to uh, destroy a good-sized carcass of beef? Oh, I've worked in some of your big packing houses. Yeah. Sometimes a pack of brown rats will strip a whole beef carcass in 12 minutes flat. 12 minutes. Oh, and then again. Sometimes the joke's on them. They get caught in the grinding machinery. Listen, you're getting spray all over your sandwich. Is that poison? Well, what difference does it make? It's all loaded with chemicals and preservatives anyway. 12 minutes for a steer, huh? How about one minute for a human-sized carcass? Oh, if they're deprived of their normal food, they can do wonders. But one minute? I think you're getting into the piranha category. It just don't seem feasible. Thank you. And bon appetit. Go, Sahib. Magum back. Magum back. What is it? Beef curry. Beef curry? Hmm. Well. Yes, it looks like curry, but I don't see much beef. Well, it's not, uh, Bad. Wait till it starts doing the flaming sword dance in your colon. Shalom. Sit down. You get many customers in here? Are you kidding? In this neighborhood, if it's not chicken soup and matzo balls, forget it. Mm, that's what I heard. That's strange, him opening a place like this. It's crazy. But he's like that. Let me tell you something. I saw him talking to one of these old neighborhood guys, right? Huh? You know what he asks? He asks, does the old guy ever see any of his friends or relatives hanging around at night? Well, the old guy tells him all his friends and relatives are dead. So do you know what the boss says? The boss says it doesn't make any difference if they're dead or not. Does he see them? Now, that's crazy, right? Is he at home? He's never home. If you saw where he lived, you wouldn't ask why. Did you hear your boss talk about uh, something like a rakusha, or a kaka, or a raka, something? Uh-uh. The only thing he's ever talked to me about is to wash my hands before I serve the food to people. Well, that's considerate. Why? Uh, why all the questions? Well, I've only got one more, really. <clears throat> Where's the bathroom? 
The curry's getting to you already, man. It's out back, Sahib. Out back. Just recently, you were making some big noises about a series on the plight of the old folks down at Roosevelt Heights. Huh? I haven't seen one written word about it yet. Oh, I was down there tonight, Tony. Well, something very weird is going on. It's coming together very oddly. You're Tony. dripping on my desk. Well, oh, yes. Well, look here, see? Oh, well, that's a national disgrace. A man that age having to eke out a living as a busboy. No, no. Those are East Indian clothes, Tony. He tried to kill me with a crossbow. A crossbow? Yeah. Yeah, look, look here. This is where he lives, see? See those swastikas on the wall? Wait a minute, wait a minute. A crossbow? Yeah, for crying out loud, a crossbow. Look, see that right in his hand? It's kind of blurry, but you can sort of make it out if you squint your eyes a little bit. A crossbow and swastikas, and he lives in Roosevelt Heights? Yeah, that's right. Listen, I've been doing a little reading. Apparently, the Nazis did not invent the swastika. It's a Hindu sign. It's very old, used to ward off evil spirits. Ward off evil spirits? That's right. You know, in the year 1066, the Saxons lost the Battle of Hastings because their crossbows were no match for the Norman longbows in terms of range and accuracy. In that way, two disparate cultures were melded. You know, Ron, in your own quiet way, you're... Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Ron. On set, what is it going to drive me into a state institution? Yeah, Tony, I heard this man say something about a Rakusha or an Aksha or something. Have you ever heard anything like that? 
no, and I don't really care, Carl. Uh, I'm just going to finish some work and then I'm going home. Uh, Suddenly I'm very tired. You're very tired. You're dripping on my desk yeah. again. Oh. Indian swastikas, Norman Conquest. Am I supposed to see God's design in all this? a.m. Officers York and Boxman, 12th Precinct, making their normal rounds. They've been told to keep an extra lookout since the events of the past couple of days. It would have been better for them if they hadn't. Oh, what's the time? Uh, it's only 2.30. It's going to be another long night. Uh, well, let's roll. Stopping for. I saw somebody run into that alley. Where? Down there? Yeah. I don't see a thing. Could have sworn I saw something. All right, you win. I'll take a look. Tomorrow night, I'm driving all night long. Somebody creeping around in there. Sergeant DeVito, I thought he was in the hospital. Mom? What did you say? That's my mom out there. What do you mean, your mother? That's Sergeant DeVito. Stay back. Sorry, just stay back. Don't come now. Don't come any closer. Sorry, don't come any closer. This is one of my most prized possessions. I doubt seriously you'll find a better third century rendering of the goddess Kali anywhere in the world. I always like to say, the third century is when the cult of Kali flowered. Cauliflower, vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be with you straight away. free to browse? Oh, Mr. Marriott Lane. Yes, my name is Carl Kolshak. I'm the I'm with the INS. And you, sir, are the foremost expert on East Indian arts. And I have a few questions for you. It's Lane Marriott, not Marriott Lane. Yes, certainly, certainly. Now, let me see what I can do about not putting the cart before the ox. Now, I'm trying to find out something about a creature named Raka, Raka Shushi, Raka Lanki, Raka something. I didn't hear it too well. But there are a plethora of Indian words beginning with those syllables. Well, yeah, well, this rock takes pleasure in eating human flesh. You're talking about the wreck, Shasta. Well, that's it. Business that's it. Good. Well, that's all right. Don't, don't worry about me. I don't have to be back at the office. Now, go on. Give me the poop about this rock, Shasta. 
Well, the Rakshasa is the disciple of Ravenna. Ravenna, whose deeds were so horrible, he stopped the sun and the moon in their course. You know, I had a date with a girl in college just like that once. Mr. Kolchak, I value my time. If it's your intention merely to be a music hall wag, no, no, please no, state no, so. No, 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 please. I was just trying to ease the tension. And I noticed that you were a man who appreciated a good joke over there. I mean, uh, cauliflower. <laughs> yes, not again. Good. Yeah. Well, go on, go on. Well, a rakshasa is an evil spirit who can possess a man's mind and delights in the consumption of human flesh. Really? Well, I had a run-in with an old Indian, or maybe it was a Pakistani, I don't know. Anyway, he tried to kill me with a crossbow, and I was it possible that he's a rakshasa? Think, man, think! I just told you, a rakshasa is a spirit of myth. They're not real. However, a crossbow is the method prescribed in legend by which one may destroy a rakshasa with arrows blessed by the divine Brahma himself. Well, then this old man was trying to kill a Rakshasa, or thought he was. Well, why would he take a shot at me? The chap's actions seem understandable to me somehow. Oh, you do enjoy a good joke, don't you? So that's all the Rakshasa are after, huh? Eating people. After Ravana, their leader, was killed, the Rakshasa lived on leaderless. They drifted into a timeless limbo where, according to legend, they send emissaries into the living world to see if the time is right. To see if the time is right for their reappearance on the face of the earth. So when is that? When the world has slipped to the edge of the abyss. Uh -huh. Mistrust. Decadence, mm -hmm. moral decline. I see, in other words, they might be getting their marching orders right now. Now, you really must excuse me. Yes, yes. Well, I'll just hang around here. Say, my boss might like this as a paperweight. How much are you getting for it? 3750 dollars. Oh. Well, come to think of it, he's got a sentimental attachment to one he's got. Now it's a little round ball, a uh, little cottage inside, you shake it up and snow falls on it, you know. Uh, did, 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 did you ever see Citizen Kane? Yes! Uh, yes. Take a look at that hanging over there. You may find it of use. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes, I remember her well. Tony? Yeah. Uh, oh, this is it, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. The story that starts out with the rodent problems of the lower income old folks and degenerates into this drivel about some evil spirit that comes from New Delhi and makes sandwiches out of people? Say, Hindu spirit's got nothing to do with New Delhi. Also appears to his victims as Carl Kolchak, but actually looks like Bongo the Chimp with fans. See, he only appeared to Harry Starman as me, Tony. Why don't you read the thing thoroughly? Now, the, the rakshasa have magical powers. They seduce the victim to death by taking on the image of someone the victim trusts. And poor Harry Starman, he trusted you. Well, obviously he never had to depend on you to come up with a cogent story, something that'll turn a profit. Tony, you gotta put this story on the wire now. If only one paper picks it up and prints it, some butchery may be prevented. Put this on the wire, put myself up for ridicule, put myself on unemployment? Now think about it a moment, Tony. Just think about it. Consider the logic. Before Harry died, he called my name. He thought he saw me. Now that young cop with his name York. York. The scuttlebutt is. Scuttlebutt. The, the the rumor is that he believes he saw Sergeant Ernest DeVito, a guy who's been a father figure to him all of his life, and DeVito was on sick leave because of a coronary. Oh, he just wigged out because he saw his partner get hurt. Well, what did happen to his partner? Eaten by rats while York stood by and watched him. Come, come on. Listen, it's the way the Rakshasa works. He plucks images from the brains of those he wants to slaughter. Someone he knows that they can trust. If, even if the paper's printed as a joke, it might make sense to some of those old people. Worry them into being careful. Sure it would make sense to them. They're senile. Just a minute. You may be my employer, but you're walking on eggs when you talk that way, Buster. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but this is a little too much. Come on, Tony, do it. Will you do it? Put it on the wire, will you? As far as I'm concerned, it's bedtime for Bonzo. 
Stop, Vincenzo. What, who, who, where, are you, where are you going? That's none of your concern. Vincenzo, come back here! able to get out of him is that he's going to the doctor for some shots. Mm hmm Yeah, well, I'd like to give him a shot in the head. That's what I'd like to do. Great Brahma, creator of all creatures, to you I commend my unworthy soul. Sir. No, 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 wait, wait. I, I'm not the Rakshasa, I'm the Kolshak, Carl Kolshak. Please. Please, I wish to apologize for last night. I thought you were... The Rakshasa. Yes, I'm sorry. I never thought I would be old. Look at me now. My eyes don't serve me, my hands betray me, and my courage is as shaky as my body. That is why I fired at you. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. You're very ill. It looks like you've got a fever here. Listen, I've got a car outside. Let me take you to the hospital. No, no. I have to remain here and try to complete my task. Hunting the Rakshasa? Yes. I am a servant of Brahma. I must do my duty. For 60 years now, I have roamed the world seeking and destroying the Rakshasa wherever they appear. Have you ever gotten any? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. A few. 60... Years. How old are you? I'm nearly 80. And I'm afraid I've destroyed my last rakshasa. All I can hope for is to pass on arrows to another of my kind. Here in Chicago? To combat the rakshasa, one must be clear of mind, but most of all, honest and brave. P -p Perhaps you. You best go home. You need a doctor. I'll bring my car. Right? No, no, no. Please go home. It is dangerous here for you. The Rakshasa knows I'm helpless. I can sense him lurking nearby, waiting to strike. Like the spineless cowards they all are. Ah. Easy, Pop. Easy uh, now. No, I'll, I'll find a way to take care of you. Please, please, remove yourself from here. And take these with you, should you have to defend yourself. Uh, Please. But, uh... No, take them. They're blessed. Don't let yourself be fooled. He will present himself to you as someone you know and trust. But you must shoot. Shoot, or your flesh will be ripped apart. I got one problem, Pop. There isn't anyone that I trust. Don't be fooled. His power is that he can find a person and deceive you. Go home. Don't come back. You'll be ripped as if by mad dogs. Huh? Oh. Thank you. 
stop. Don't you come nearer. Emily? Emily, what are you doing here? Did you answer me? Well, I just had to follow you. You know all about the haunts of criminals. And I wanted to have some real life research for my novel. Well, I don't care about your novel. Now, if you don't stop right there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to shoot you. Oh, Carl, I just wanted to experience a case for myself. Put down that bow, you're scaring me. Well, then you stop walking. Carl. Now, I mean it, Em. Emily, I really mean it. I'm frightened down in this bad place. Emily? I'd like to have told Miss Emily that the Rakshasa appeared to me as her. According to the legend, it meant that I trusted her. But then I would have also had to tell her that I shot a steel arrow straight into her. I don't think she would have appreciated that. But in the final analysis, what's the difference? As long as we all trust each other, why should anyone's feelings be bruised? Why, Miss Emily, you look absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. I have an appointment. Really? A business or pleasure? A uh, business. Uh, Miss Cowles. Oh, Why, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Oh. Mr. Cartwright, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright. How do you do, sir? My pleasure. It must be very nice working with such a great lady. Allow me. Yes. She gives the best advice, even medical advice. Oh, I'm sure. She's right on the button. <laughs> yes. Yes, I... Mr. Cartwright. Oh, hormones. Oh, Mr. Mr. Cartwright. Good luck, Emily. Thank you. Let's see, where was I? Yes. And if you happen to be walking along a lonely country road one night and you see your favorite aunt coming toward you, good luck to you, too. Thank you.